Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and uh, welcome back to the reminder A of this uh, program which inshallah will be for about 10 minutes. Um, Ramadan is obviously a time of greatness, there's so many good things to do in Ramadan and uh, one thing that I want to focus uh, on today uh, which is something that uh, we tackle in our book the 30 steps towards a refreshing Ramadan the reminder too which is about planning Ramadan but I want to look at this aspect from a different perspective because one thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us as a power and we know it is actually called a weapon of the believer is the dua dua which is a asking it's an interaction between a slave and his Lord. Yesterday I spoke about how important Ramadan is in us acknowledging our status as a Muslim, meaning someone who submits, as an Abd, which is one of the highest stations that a person can realize that he is actually a slave, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He works uh, and she works in accordance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dua is something that Allah gives us to interact with him, to ask of him, to seek of him. But dua is twofold, and as, as I'll mention. Uh, no doubt you'd have heard the commentary before that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he spoke about one of the most prominent verses in regards to dua, which is, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ And if my slaves ask you, O Muhammad, about me, then surely I am close, I am near. And if you just ponder about these few words here, first of all, it's a reaffirmation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi if my slaves, and remember, see how the usage of the word slaves here is relevant because it's about having that interaction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you that title. When they, the slaves, ask you, O Muhammad, about me, then they are almost like asking the Prophet وسلم, how do we get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, you tell us how to get close as a messenger uh, as one who is chosen by Allah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَإِنِّي قَرِيب I am close I am close and فَإِنِّي is also an emphasis here it's an emphasis to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to us so we don't need any uh, intersection we don't need any intermediary between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the slave and this verse specifically in Surah Al-Baqarah was related amongst the whole verses of uh, the fasting and Ramadan and, and etc it is sandwiched if you like between some of the ahkam and the rules related to Ramadan which means that there is an extra focus there should be in Ramadan for being uh, for making that attempt to to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ask Allah uh, what, you, what you can. Now dua is about, it, it's not just asking Allah. It, dua has lots of things related to it, you know. A lot of the time people say, you know, I make dua, I'm not, my dua is not answered, or I keep on making dua, what, or how is the dua going to change the reality of my, my qadar or my divine destination and so on and so forth. The reality is though, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to make dua and fulfill conditions and criteria and establish all the necessary things that will allow your, uh, your um, dua to be answered. And at the same time, it's to get rid of all the things, all the things that might be barriers and hurdles between your dua being answered. Uh, recently, I was uh, talking to um, one of the uh, young ladies uh, who uh, was having a little bit of issues about her, uh, about her Islam, and uh, not quite sure about Islam. And one of the things that, that she said, which uh, was striking, I mean, we had a quick discussion, and there was messages, and she was asking, and I was replying, and so on. 
And then she's saying, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm asking, I'm seeking for the truth. Uh, and, I, and I'm turning to Allah or I'm, I'm asking him to show me. And I'm not, you know, there's no answer from him. He's not showing me the truth. He's not guiding me to the truth. And I said to her, well, I mean, without sounding arrogant in any way, I said to her, well, how do you know that maybe putting you in touch with me was, a, was an answer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, or maybe another sheikh or something like that. But so don't always think that your dua has to come in the package and the presentation that you want it. You know, you, you might be seeking something specific, you know, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you are sincere and, and you're doing the right things, Allah will give you that which you ask for in a different format. And He might guide you to it in a different way. And the beauty of Ramadan, and that's what we need to practice, is part of the planning for Ramadan is to think, what are the things that I really want in my life? What are the things that I'm aspiring for? And these could be from the dunya or from the akhirah. And in the past, the righteous people of the past, they used to, um, they used to have a, a small list, you know, four or five items that they really wanted. Uh, they felt very close to their hearts. And they used to continuously and repeatedly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in every occasion that they had during this month of Ramadan, in the sujood, uh, whilst they are, you know, the times after the prayer, uh, between the two, the adhan and the iqama, last third of the night, in the, you know, the early hours of the morning, and so on. Whenever there was an occasion uh, where dua was was emphasized, and even when there was an occasion, so there was just like focus, 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 focus on those specific dua, and that's what you should be doing. You should have a list. Try and make that list today after this program, inshallah. Write down what are the things that you want. Do it, you could write it down in pen on paper. You could write it as a note on your, on your phone or whatever. And write down four or five things that you really want to achieve in Ramadan. Sorry, not, not in Ramadan. What, what are your aspirations? Now, you, it might be that you uh, get married. Some people might want that. Some people might want a child. Some people might want a better uh, house maybe a better job, some people might want, you know, different things. And I'll tell you this story um, that uh, I, I told before, and, and it's quite an interesting one. What, the, what the, they used to narrate about the righteous people is that whenever they, you know, did this in Ramadan, they would focus, focus, focus on Ramadan. They used to say the next Ramadan would not come without their dua being answered. It was almost like a a guarantee that you know they had there's a year there for that for that dua to to be answered and once i gave this actual saying i said it in a khutbah once and uh, one person was listening to that khutbah and he tells me this story one year later so he heard me in the khutbah saying this he said okay i'm gonna try this and do you know what he asked for what was really annoying him was that he had a neighbor who was really horrible it was a nasty neighbor they call it a neighbor from hell in some of the terminologies now and this neighbor was so nasty so annoying that he, he he was really making his life miserable and we know that a bad neighbor can make your life miserable so he was making dua he said let me try what uh, Sheikh Omar has mentioned and he kept on making dua oh Allah you know relieve me of this neighbor relieve me of this neighbor. he made that dua wrong and time went by and the year was approaching to end and he said you know I made that dua I asked Allah nothing is happening you know it seems and he said subhanallah and he was telling me this story so it's not you know he said the last sort of month before the next ramadan he said something happened there was some sort of issue there was uh, you know and he said all of a sudden um there was I, I don't know, the, the, the the police or the law enforcement or something came in and they ended up uh, taking that person and his family and basically uh, you know, removing them from the house, uh, the neighbor, this was the neighbor, and they they got rid of him, and so that neighbor went, and he said, subhanAllah, he said, yeah, and he, no one could have ever guessed that that would have been an end uh, to that scenario. So, dua uh, is powerful, but there is an important dimension of dua, and dua is about how you focus what you want. And this is something I mentioned in another of my short reminders. You can find it on YouTube on my channel. Uh, and that is dua teaches us to be focused. And what, what do I mean? So, for example, if your dua is, oh Allah, uh, you know, give me some, uh, some wealth, 
uh, you know, your dua is you want wealth, you want some more money. Automatically, what's going to happen is you're going to be focused that you're going to be searching for wealth. So your dua, if you like, allows you to uh, focus what you want. And so therefore, you're going to spend time, you're going to spend effort, etc. to go in line with your dua. So now your dua is not just a one dimension of, oh, I'll just say the words and Allah will do the rest. No. Your dua is, I'll say the words and I will do the actions and I will work and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help me along the line and He will make things easy for me. He will pave the road in front of me. He will remove the hurdles and the obstacles. But I still have to work to get that because it's not going to just, you know, things are not just going to happen. And if, if we look at the stories of the righteous people, we see that as a reality happening with them on a regular basis. So the message from this reminder is make Ramadan a month of dua Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, focus, have a few set kind of things that you want to do. Make that part of your plan as well in Ramadan of what you're going to try and achieve. And then keep going for it inshallah. And you'll get, bi ta'ala, a lot of what you're asking for.